What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. The source level annotation processing first appeared in Java 5. It is a technique that allows us to add additional source files to our project during the compilation stage. The files generated don't have to be Java files, rather any kind of description, metadata, documentation, resource, or any other type of file can be added based on the annotations in our source code. Annotation processing is actively used in many Java libraries, or to augment classes with boilerplate code in the Lombok library. Note here that Lombok uses annotation processing as a bootstrapping mechanism to include itself into the compilation process and modify an already existing class. This hacky technique has nothing to do with the intended purpose of annotation processing and therefore will not be tackled in this video. So let's start by creating a simple employee POJO class with several fields. What we want to do is generate a builder helper class to instantiate the employee class more fluently. The employee builder class structure is completely defined by the employee fields we have. The at builder annotation we are going to create will allow us to generate a builder class for each class annotated with it. Therefore, let's go ahead and create this add builder annotation. The at target annotation here will be set to type as we will be using this annotation at a class level. And the source retention policy means that this annotation is only available during source processing and is not available at runtime. If you have no basic idea on how to create your own custom annotations, please check the video linked in the card above. Let's try now to implement a processor for the annotation we just created. Our goal is to call the builder processor class you see every time we compile our application. To do that, we'll have to use the annotation processing API located in the javax.annotation.processing package. And the main interface we'll have to implement is the processor interface, which has a partial implementation in the form of the abstract processor class. This class is the one we're going to extend to create our own annotation processor. So after extending the abstract processor class, we'll need to specify what classes this processor is capable of processing alongside the supported source code version. This can be done either by implementing the methods get supported annotation types and get supported source version of the processor interface or by annotating your class with add supported annotation types and add supported source version annotations, which is exactly what we're going to do in our example. You can specify the complete class name as we did, or you can use wildcards. This will process annotations inside the whole package and all its sub packages. The add auto service annotation we added here is part of Google's auto service library, which was added as a dependency to our Maven project, as you can see. This annotation allows us to generate the processor metadata, which will be explained in a bit. The parameter added to at auto service is none other than the processor interface class we are implementing in the builder processor. Okay, now the single method we'll have to implement is the process method that does the processing itself. It is called by the compiler for every source file containing the given matching annotations. The annotation classes are passed as the first set of annotations argument. In our case, we will have a single element inside this set, the builder annotation, and the information about the current processing round is passed as the round environment argument. But wait, what is a processing round, right? You see, what if after generating a certain file given a certain annotation, that generated file also contains the annotation we are processing in question? We will have to go through a second round of annotation processing to take care of the annotation we found inside the file we just generated. That is exactly what environment rounds are about. Let's take our example and suppose that in the first round we are generating a builder for the employee class using this process method. Here, the builder class generated will not contain the at builder annotation again. Thus, in the second round, when this generated class is passed to the compiler, no new classes will be generated, and therefore, the processing will stop. The return boolean value should be true if your processor has processed all the past annotations and you don't want them to be processed by other annotation processors down the list. Okay, our processor does not really do anything useful yet, so let's fill it with code. First, we need to iterate through all annotation types that are found in the class. Even though in this example we only have one, as I previously mentioned, it is still better to generalize it. And here we use the round environment instance to receive all elements annotated with the add builder annotation. In this case, we will have a single element of type class, the employee class. 
Now for each class, we will call a helper method that will generate the builder class file for us. Inside this method, the first thing we want to do is retrieve a few information that we'll need while writing the builder file, such as the class name we are working with, the package name, the builder class name we want to create, and the fields associated with the class we are processing. Okay, now that we have everything, we need to generate the builder class. And to do that, we'll use the file instance provided by the processing inf variable of the abstract processor we are extending. The filer will help us create a new source file when provided with the builder's full name, the one that contains the package, and will open a writer allowing us to output the method and fields we need into this newly generated builder class. The complete code of the generate builder file method is as you can see in front of you. Don't look too much into it, I guarantee it is pretty straightforward, we are just writing the builder class that will be generated by the processor. I even made use of text blocks to make it as readable as possible. You see, in the first text block, we are adding the package and class initialization lines to the file. Next, we are creating private fields in our builder similar to our input class. Then for each field, we are creating the builder setter method corresponding to it. And finally, there's the build method that returns the created employee object. Now, to see the code generation and action, you should compile your module and the generated employee builder class can be found inside the target slash generated sources slash annotations directory and should look like this. Note that in my example, if you want to reproduce it exactly as is, I had two Maven modules, one named processor and the second model. You can see the project structure in front of you. The POM files corresponding to each module are pretty straightforward. The Google service dependency we mentioned at the beginning was added in the processor module and the processor metadata we mentioned a few minutes ago are generated and located under the meta n folder marked by the red arrow. If you are using IntelliJ, you may have to manually right click on the generated sources folder and mark it as your generated sources root the first time you compile only so you may be able to actually use and invoke the classes you generated. And if you find yourself in need of debugging the code, you can run the following maven debug command alongside the debug configuration you see. And finally, if you need a hand, the code demonstrated in the video will be available on GitHub for you to check out. So, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.